Now, how good would this be? Being able to hit the green from long distance with long irons. That feeling would be unreal. Converting them for birdies. Okay, so we're down on the 12th here at Motcham Hall. Have a look at this hole. I have purposely put myself around 180 to 200 yards out. Um, I need to give it a quick laser to double check. But it's a tough distance, that isn't it? Make or break for most of us. We're gonna talk about long irons, how you get this strike, no matter your age or ability. Honestly, listen to these checkpoints, implement these two important points, you'll change your strike. Absolutely change your strike. So if you're brand new to this channel, I want you to know that this channel is powered by you, the viewers. So literally anything that you ask for on the channel, we create and we make. So today's tip comes in from Aaron. Now, I think a lot of us can relate to this. I'd say 99% of us. Um, I would have to say my long iron play is the worst. Accuracy and strike just isn't where it should be. Can you relate? So, I mean, the first place we've definitely got to start with this is just, well, one, choosing a club. I'm gonna have to go four iron. Hard club. Is outlining what actually has to happen. So what is our goal by the end of this video? By the end of this video, you're gonna achieve this. Number one, we want to have that feeling of getting these hands ahead of the golf ball. Anytime that we're in more of that scoopy capacity, we're more likely to catch it a little bit thin, a little bit fat sometimes, and we start adding loft to the golf club. So that's the first thing we've got to bring into our game. The next thing is we want to have that concept of our bottom of the arc happening ahead of that golf ball. So separating that golf ball as it is right now, anything sort of target side is where we want to feel our ground interaction is. And the final point is club head speed. And I mean this seriously. If we've got a lower lofted club like this, if we don't create enough speed and a good enough strike, then we're really gonna find it hard to hit these clubs any distances at all. So by the end of this video, we're gonna really outline how you get your hands ahead, how you hit down the golf ball, and both these factors alone in the drill are gonna help you generate way more speed. Also, I just wanna say, if you are somebody that does generate a low club head speed, then, well, I would definitely recommend going down that hybrid route. You're gonna have way more success. Now, the first thing I want you to feel is a lot more turn in the backswing. And, well, target's actually this way, but I've flipped round for good reason. Look at my shadow. Now, the biggest thing of causing a lack of speed and stopping you getting your hands ahead and your bottom of the arc ahead is too much lateral movement in this backswing. What I want you to really focus is, and this is a great hack you can use straight out on the course, is look at your shadow and actually just make reference to my shadow. I'll take a few steps back so you can see it fully here. I want you to make some swings where you really feel your shadow doesn't move considerably off. And if I'm perfectly honest, I'm more bothered about this lower half. So my key here is allow these hips to turn a more centered turn allows you to create a bigger X factor stretch and transfer that weight through. This alone is gonna help you control those three factors. So club head speed, bottom of the arc, and hands ahead. So first tip, use your shadow. All right, so let's, uh, let's give that a bit of a go. Honestly, flip round, test your shadow, feel that a lot more centered turn as your first target, and that's gonna feel Remarkably different. That strike is so good. And you'll find the ball just gets penetrating forwards. Right, but that's not everything. I now wanna to talk to you about posting. And honestly, this is probably my favorite part of this video. So posting up into impact, it's lining up, isn't it? How I want you to feel this is, first things first, you've got a better turn in the backswing, so you're gonna be in a much better scenario. But on the way into impact, I want you to think about lining up. So if you look at my left shoulder, my left hip, and my left foot, they're all sort of in, in one line. I'm not right back here. I'm not smothering down on the golf ball. I'm in a good athletic position. So really making some practice swings, feeling as though 
and posting up onto that left side, just like I am here. Well, this would catch fat, catch thin. This would just chop into the ground. Just get that left arm working. Post it up. Left hip, left shoulder and left foot all in one line. And honestly, how I think about that is literally just make some swings in front of a mirror, one handed, seeing the all line up. You're gonna get some real time feedback for how you, yes you right now, are gonna feel this in your swing. All that's honestly left to do is bring this all together. So on the course, long irons, even short irons, this is gonna really help. Remember I said at the start, hands ahead, bottom of the arc ahead and help you get more speed. That is how you hit long irons. Lack of speed is no good. So watch your shadow. More centered helps control bottom of the arc. Also a better turn helps create more speed. Having that feeling of posting up, not sliding, not chopping, is absolutely magic this. Great analogies, great feelings. Give it a go. By the way, what a day. This is what golf's about. Can I give that a tiger twirl? Because that's probably one of the best four irons I've hit. We are dancing. So there we go. Thanks so much for watching. I do hope that has helped you improve your iron strike. And if it has, check back in tomorrow and let me know how you get on. And as always, anything that you're worried about in your golf game, get down in the comments.